From the first time I paddled among the crumbling ruins of the Berkeley Pier's outer reaches, they reminded me of England's Stonehenge. Only instead of being planted in the pastoral swales of Salisbury Plain, they're moored in the watery wilderness of San Francisco Bay. In some ways, the pier's outer reaches look still more ancient than Stonehenge, though they've been abandoned for a mere half century. The rusted rebar, the tumbled pilings, the aging concrete all appear prehistoric, as if they've always been there. Yet unlike Stonehenge's barren rock faces, the outer reaches teem with life. Barnacles, mussels, mosses, and seagrasses abound. Gulls, cormorants, and pelicans perch on the cross braces. Then suddenly they startle and take wing. They swirl at lightning speed in great flocks that call out as they fly. Then they suddenly reverse course and flash from gray to white as their underbellies are revealed. The outer pier is actually an artifact of recent history. After two private wharves were built in the mid-19th century to offload lumber and other commercial goods, the Golden Gate Ferry Company built a municipal pier for Berkeley in 1926. It extended three and a half miles into the bay in the direction of San Francisco. Ferries left the city's Hyde Street Wharf and landed at the end of the Berkeley Pier. From there, the offloaded cars and trucks drove the two-lane pier up University Avenue. Berkeley football games produced hours-long traffic jams from the pier all the way to the campus. When the Bay Bridge opened in 1939, auto traffic was rerouted, the ferry service terminated, and the outer pier turned over to fishermen and strollers. In the 60s, the outer reaches were altogether abandoned to the elements. Today you can walk just the first 3,000 feet to a barricade where you peer between graffiti-laced planks at the haunting ruins of the outer pier. For a kayaker, the outer reaches are a special delight, a paddler's paradise. The Golden Gate looms in the distance ten miles across the bay, but on especially clear days it glows red and seems just a few paddle strokes away. Around me swirl millions of people and vehicles going about their frenetic business, but here among the ruins of Seahenge I hear just the lapping of water, the calls of the gulls and the occasional train whistle from the east-west line passing through Berkeley.
I look around me and see that I'm sharing this vast marine wilderness with just a smattering of fishing vessels and sailboats, a ferry racing towards San Francisco, and an enormous freighter passing through the Golden Gate on its way to the Richmond refinery. Here at the westernmost tide of civilization, I feel a sudden surge of exhilaration for having found wildness once more in the great blue eye of heaven.